Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is make pulsating value. Let's run through the quick little example, and you'll he see here we have a number fluctuating between zero and one, and it's basically pulsating back and forth. It's going to go from one to zero, and then zero back to one over time. And our node itself, the make pulsating value node, is what allows us to do this. It's really nice and useful because it's not a linear progression, as we'll see here, but it's got a nice little bit of an ease in and out when it gets to the top and the bottom. So here's the node itself. The node takes in three values. One is optional, the other two are required. The in current time, this is basically the driving value between zero and one in regards to if it's going to be where it's going to be on its pulse between one and zero and zero and one. I'll show you this in a second exactly what I mean. But our second value that's not optional is pulses per second. So this is kind of like our multiplier. If we want to go from zero, if we want to pulse one time per second, then we have one pulse per second. Two times per second, two pulses per second. And it will scale down if we want to get 10 one pulse every tenth of a second, so basically 10. If we want it to take 10 seconds for one pulse, then we can put this at a fractional number, like 0 0.1. If I was to, for example, hook this back up and run this, you'll notice our number goes down from 1 to 0 over 5 seconds, and then from 0 back up to 1 over another 5, 10 seconds total. But you'll also notice what I meant by the little bit of easing. If you'll notice, when it gets near the bottom, it slows down, speeds up through the middle, and then slows down again at the top, and then repeats back down. So you'll see a little bit of a slowdown when it gets to the zero and the one values. Okay, so let's go ahead and cover how the inputs work. In current time is basically a driving value of how much time has passed to determine how much, how far along it should be on the pulse. Let me show you a fixed input. So we're going to put in zero. We're going to tell it to pulse one pulse per second, and we're going to output our value. And we're going to get one. Remember, it starts at one. It starts at the top, it goes down to zero, and comes back. Since we've passed zero amount of our time, we're now at the top. We are at one. If we put in one, for example, so let's put in one, and we'll go ahead and hit play, you'll notice we're at one. Zero is our start, one is our stop, and it starts and stops at one for the actual value. So over time between zero and one, it's gonna go from one to zero to one. So if we put this at 0.5 or half of our value, now we'll get zero like we're expecting. And of course, anything between it's gonna give us anything else. 0.75 should give us roughly between zero and one. However, you'll notice it does, and then we'll move it up a little bit. We'll do something like 0.9, for example. We'll hit play, and we'll get 0.905. Even if we did something like 0.1, we're going to get not exactly what we'd expect in terms of a round number, 0.905. Remember how I mentioned it will slow down at the top and the bottom and then speed up when it's in the middle. So we're not going to get a smooth linear curve. We're not going to go from this point to this point over time. It's going to slowly ramp up, go fast, and slowly ramp down. Now in terms of driving this, you're pretty much going to put in a time. So get game time in seconds works very well. Then determine how many pulses per second you want. Let's say we want two pulses per second. So I'm going to go with 0.5, half a pulse per second. Sorry. We want it to pulse every two seconds. Therefore, it's half a pulse a second, and hit play, and you'll notice it goes back and forth over two seconds. Now, you can modify these things in different points. Let's say you still want it at one pulse per second, but you want to just modify the time. You can always use a divisor on the time. So in this case, I'm going to divide our input time by 10 and run this, and you'll notice it runs 10 times slower, and I don't have to worry about modifying my pulses per second. Now, our phase in phase, this is completely optional, and what this does is basically offset. Remember how I mentioned our input current time determines between zero and one where we're at on our actual 
pulse? Well, the input phase basically offsets that. It will take our input time and add an offset of between zero and one so you can sync it up with other things. So other things, for example, might start a little bit earlier and then you want to sync this one up. You could just figure out where it's at currently with the pulsating where it's at on its current output value, shove that into your input phase and it's gonna go ahead and sync it up. And that's pretty much it. That is our make pulsating value node. It's nice and handy when you want something to go between zero and one and you want to do it smoothly, it's, it's to give a pulse and it's nice and controllable based on the number of pulses per second and your input time and your phase for your drivers. So we could have a light pulse on and off using just the pulsating value node and drive it by the time, for example. And then by adjusting the pulses per second directly, we can adjust how much it's gonna flash on and off. But this one's really nice because it's not that linear approach. We're not gonna go one, zero, one, over that exact amount of time, exactly the same at each step. It's gonna go a little bit slower, speed up, and then go a little bit slower when it gets to the bottom, and then repeat the same thing. So we get a nice little steady pulsing effect. And that's it, that is our make pulsating value node.